Well, hey there, kiddos. I hope you're having a great weekend. We are going to talk about something called X and Y intercepts today, which is a pretty simple topic. Um, it's new, but it should make decent sense as we start going into it. So the X intercept or also the zero of a function, that's it's called both things, so you could hear either word. Um, the X intercept or zero of a function is the point where a graph crosses or intersects the X axis. So it's just where the graph crosses the X axis. The Y intercept, I bet you can guess, is the point where the graph crosses or intersects the y-axis. Now, the y-intercept doesn't have um, a special name. It's not it, like x-intercept and zero are the same thing, but y-intercept is just y-intercept. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just look so, x, at some graphs, and we're going to talk about what the x and the y-intercept are, and then we're going to write the slope of the line because it's good to practice that. It's something we should know. So x-intercept where the point crosses the x-axis. This line right here crosses the x-axis at this point. Well, that point happens to be at 4, 0. And so we're going to write it as an ordered pair because it is a point on the graph. So you need to make sure you write it as an ordered pair. The y-intercept happens right here where that graph crosses the y-axis. And it happens to be at 0, negative 2. Now, to find your slope, I've already marked two pretty points. I'm just going to draw my little right triangle and then I'm or my right angle and I'm going to count so I went up two and over one two three four so I went up two and over four which happens to simplify to one half so the slope of that line is one half and it's positive because that line is increasing as we go left to right so number two same kind of deal I'm going to give you just a second why don't you try on your own and find the x and the y intercept and the slope and then come back so pause for a second go do it and then come back and then check your answers so hopefully you checked it. I got that the zero or the x-intercept was right here at three zero, and then the y-intercept was at zero three. And then my slope, I went down three and over three, so my slope is negative one. That is a decreasing line, so your slope needs to be negative. You need to make sure you're always paying attention to that. Some of you missed questions on your quiz because you weren't paying attention to whether the line increased or decreased, so you missed signs. Now number three is a vertical line goes straight up and down. So when I do x-intercept, it's easy. It intersects the x-axis right here. Well, it's in between two numbers, 3 and 4, so it intersects at 3.5 and 0. That's going to be the x-intercept. The y-intercept, however, this line never crosses the y-axis. Never. It's vertical. It's parallel to it. They never touch. So this does not have a y-intercept. We get to just say none. There isn't one. As for the slope, or m, if you will remember, and I hope at some point you all get this stuck in your head. Hoy and Vux, okay? Vertical lines have undefined slope and their equations are always x equals. Well, this right here is a vertical line, which means its slope is undefined. Now, number four is a little different. First of all, it uses a word that you haven't seen. It says root, root, zero, x-intercept. They all mean the same thing. I know it's a lot of words for the same thing, but that's just how it goes in math sometimes. It just depends on the way the question is asked, who's asking the question, and so you need to know they all mean the same thing. So they're asking us for the x and the y-intercept and the slope, but this graph right here does not cross the x or the y-axis. So the first thing we're going to do is find slope. I have two pretty points, so I'm going to go ahead and make my right angle. Or, since they tell you what the points are, you could use your slope formula and do find the change in the y and the change in the x and write y over x. But I'm just going to draw my angle and count. So I went up 1, 2, 3, and I went over 1, 2, 3, 4. So my slope is going to be 3 fourths, which means that if I start at this point right here, to get to another point on the line, I have to go up 3 and over 4. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to do it again, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's do it one more time just for the fun of it, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I'm going to connect all of those with a line. So I'm going to take my line that I already had, and I'm just going to extend it. So there is our line. We now have the line. I'll even put arrows, but well, we don't have to have arrows, okay? But now I can see the x and the y-intercept. The x-intercept occurs right here at 4, 0. And the y-intercept occurs right here at 0, negative 3. So if they only give you part of a line, you're going to have to find the slope and then use the slope to help you find the other points that you need. So now let's do from the table. 
okay? So we have to find the x and the y intercepts from a table of values. There's a couple of ways to do this, and so hopefully we can address all of them as we're looking at this. Remember, x intercept, and if you will look at all of our problems one through four, the x intercept every time was a number and then zero, a number then zero, a number comma zero, a number comma zero. So the x intercept is wherever y equals zero. The x intercept, the y intercept is where x equals zero, so it's backwards. And so if we look at our table, let's just go find where y equals zero in this first table. If I look down my y column, y equals zero right here. That means this is my x-intercept because the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis and the, on the x-axis, y is zero everywhere. So this right here is your x-intercept. Your y-intercept is where x equals zero, which occurs right here. And so I see it in the table. There is the y-intercept. Now I've got to find the slope. And so I'm just going to use these bottom two values so I can find my change in y over change in x and I will write my slope. So we're going to do m equals. And so my change in my y values from 5 to 10 is plus 5. And my change in my x values is plus 3. So my slope ends up being the change in y 5 over the change in x 3. So it's 5 thirds. Make sure you're always doing y over x when you do slope. Some of you did it backwards on your quiz. So make sure it's always y over x. Now let's do number 6. Let's first find the place where y equals zero. So scroll down in your table, uh, right here, y equals zero. So your x-intercept is going to be nine, because it's at this point nine comma zero. And then your y-intercept is where x equals zero, which happens right here. So this is your x-intercept, sorry, y-intercept. And now I have to find the slope. So the change in my y values right here from four to two is minus two because they are getting smaller. And from 3 to 6 is plus 3 because they're getting bigger, so I have negative 2 thirds. So there is the slope of that line. Now 7 and 8 are a little different because 7 and 8, if you will look, nowhere in this table does x equal 0 and nowhere in this table does y equal 0. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the slope of the line. I'm going to use the positive values down here at the bottom of the table because it will help me, but I need to know the slope. I need to know the rate of change. How much does this change for one value of x? It will help me with my table. So my change in my y values here from 1 to 3 is plus 2, so my change in y is 2. And then my change in the x values from 9 to 15 is going to be plus 6. So it's 2 over 6 or 1 third. So my slope is 1 third, okay? That means for every time y changes 1, x is going to change by 3. That's what it means, all right? So my slope has to be 1 third. It's got to be 1 over 3. So I need, we need y to equal 0. Well, somewhere between here and here, it equaled 0. And so I know that right before 1, y is going to equal zero. Well, in order for my slope of one third to work, this change has to be plus one, and this change for whatever number I'm missing here has to be plus three. And so I'm looking at this, I'm going backwards. I had to do something plus three to get nine. So I have to back up in my table, okay? It's not, I'm not adding three to get to my missing number. I'm gonna have to subtract three to get to my missing number because I'm going backwards. So if I add three to six, it's going to give me nine. Six plus three makes nine. So now my slope is one third. My y intercept, sorry, my x intercept is going to be six zero. So your x intercept is at six zero. Now to find the y intercept, I've got to find out where x equals zero. And so I'm going to have to go through my table here and I'm going to have to find out where x equals zero. So somewhere between here and here, x is going to equal zero. And so now I've sort of run out of space. I don't have a lot of room to write everything. So I'm gonna sort of make another table right here. And I'm gonna use the values that are in this table to help me. I'm gonna start with the negative three and negative three because that's the first value I have that's gonna work. Okay, and then I need to get to zero. So I have to go negative two, negative one, zero. All right, I need a change of three right here. Well. If you look at my table, from negative three to zero is going to be adding three. I have to add three, so there's my plus three I need. That means this number and this number aren't really gonna be important. I know that to get from here to here, it had to be a change of one. I had to add one because that slope of one is 
a change of 1 in the y for 3 in the x. So if I change 3 in the x, it's going to change by 1 here. So this number is what's important. So if I add 1 to negative 3, it becomes negative 2. So there is my y-intercept. So my y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 2. Now we're going to do that again because I'm sure that that was kind of confusing. So we're going to try another one. Step one, I don't have any zeros show up in my table, so I have to find the slope. So it's the first thing we're going to do, and like I did before, I'm going to use positive numbers. So from here to here is a change of 10. And then in my x's, from 4 to 8 is a change of 4. So I have 10 over 4, which is going to reduce to 5 over 2. What that means is that every time I add 5 to the y's, I have to add 2 to the x's. Well, I need y to equal 0. If I add 5 to negative 15, it becomes 10. I need 0. If I add 5 to negative 5, I get 0. There's the number I want. So there's my change of 5, which means over here, I have to have a change of 2. Well, if I do negative 4 plus 2, it gives me negative 2. So that means that my x-intercept is going to be at negative 2, 0. Now I have to look at it the other way. Now I've got to find where x equals 0. So I need to be able to add 2 to a number and it gets 0. Well, if I add 2 to my negative 2, there's my 0, which means I have to add 5 right here, just using my slope, 5 over 2. If I add 5 to my 0, I have to get, I get 5. And so there's my other 0. So y the y-intercept is going to be 0, 5. We'll practice this more in class, so if you're still have struggling with that, please make sure that you ask questions. And I'm going to fill in this little table so that everything's nice and neat. Um, you can have it written like I did. Hopefully you used to the table and yours is nice and neat because mine's not nice and neat. So like I said, if you get to practicing this when we're in class and you are having problems like number seven and number eight and you aren't sure and you can't remember, or you're still confused, please, please, please make sure you're asking questions. Okay, so let's do a few more. Now we're gonna use another graph. We have a graph. The volleyball team is traveling to a game 120 miles away. Their average speed is 40 miles an hour. The graph line describes the different distance left to travel at any time. We've got to find the x and y intercepts and state what they represent. So let's do x intercept first. So we're going to do the x intercept. And if you look down here, the x intercept is right here. The x intercept is at 3, 0. And if you look at how our graph is what is labeled, the x values are time and the, the y values are distance. So if my time is 3 and my distance is, is 0, it means that it took 3 hours to have a distance of zero. And if I have a distance of zero, then it means I'm where I wanted to be. So that it took three hours to arrive at their game. So the trip took three total hours. The y-intercept is right here at zero and 120. And so what this means is that at time zero, I was at 120 miles because time and distance. Well, time zero is when I started. So what this means is that they started 120 miles away. Your y-intercept is going to be your starting point. Your x-intercept, you'll have to look at how your graph is labeled to make sure you understand what that means. So now we're going to do find x and y-intercept using an actual equation. And then we're going to graph problems a and b using the intercepts, which is not a very big deal, but we are that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do something called the cover-up method. All right, and then that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cover things up, which is going to be interesting because I can't really cover things up where you can see it on my screen. But if you remember to find the, for the x-intercept, x-intercept is always where y equals 0, which means that I'm going to plug in 0 for y and then solve for x in this equation. But what that means, and I don't want you to do this on your paper unless you plan on writing the problem again, what that means is if I plug in 0 for y right here, this becomes 2 times 0, and 2 times 0 is what? It just makes zero. So this is just going to cross out. So it, we're going to eliminate it and cover it up and pretend it's not there. So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to take the x part, 1 half x equals negative 4. And then I'm just going to solve that equation for x. Well, to solve that equation for x, I would multiply both sides by 2 so I can get rid of that fraction. So I have 1x 
equals negative 8, which means that my x-intercept is at negative 8 and 0 because the y part equals 0. Now we're going to do it again, but this time we're going to have to plug in 0 for x because if you want the y-intercept, you need for x to equal 0. And again, if I plug in 0 for x right here, this term just cancels out. So all I have left is negative 2y equals negative 4. And to solve that, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And when you do that, you get that y equals 2. So your y-intercept is going to be at 0, 2. So I just covered them up or crossed them out, pretended they weren't there, however you want to look at it, and then I solved what was left. So now it says we need to graph it using the intercept. So I'm going to go down here to my graph. My x-intercept is at negative 8, 0, so it's right here. And then my y-intercept is at 0, 2, which is right here. And then I'm going to take my pin or my line, and I'm going to connect those two. I'll make it a little more straight because I didn't do a very good job. And there is my line. So that's what my line looks like for that first one. Put the arrows on the end so it really is a line and not a line segment. So now let's do the, last, the next one, part B. If you will notice on B, I have a negative 2y on the left of the equal sign and a y on the right of the equal sign. So I'm going to get them together. So um, I'm going to put everything together. So I'm going to add 2y to both sides so I can have positives. So what I'm going to have left is x equals... 3y minus 3. And I'm going to do what I did over here. So I'm going to do the x-intercept first. I'm going to find out what x equals, which means I have to pretend the y is not there. So what I have, if I take out that y, is x equals negative 3. That one was pretty easy. That means my x-intercept is going to be at negative 3, 0, or my 0 is at negative 3, 0. Now my y-intercept, I'm going to have to rewrite the problem. I have x equals 3y minus 3. And my if I want to find the y-intercept, I now have to make x equal 0. Well, if I just cross this out, then I don't have anything left. So when that happens, I'm going to make that x equals 0 equals 3y minus 3 so that I still have something over here. And then I have to solve for y. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And then when I divide both sides by 3, I get that y equals 1. So my y-intercept is at 0, 1. And when I come down here to graph, there's my x-intercept, there's my y-intercept, and I'm going to connect them with a line. And so that's what my line is going to look like. So let's do the last one. I have y equals 3x minus 9. And we have to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And so we're going to treat it like we did this one. If I want to find the x-intercept, I have to cancel out the y or make it 0. This one is a lot like this one. If I just cross it out, there's nothing left. So I'm going to make it a 0 equals 3x minus 9. And then I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to add 9. And then I'm going to divide by 3, and I get that 3 equals x. So my root is going to be at 3, 0. To find my y-intercept, I'm going to take the same equation, y equals 3x minus 9. And if I want the y-intercept, that means I get to make the x 0, which cancels this out. So I just have y equals negative 9. So my y-intercept was that minus 9, so it's at 0, negative 9. And I don't have to graph that one, but those are your two points, and so we could if we wanted to. But that's how you do x and y-intercept. X-intercept, it crosses the x-axis, and so y equals 0. The y-intercept, it crosses the y-axis, so x equals 0. And there are several names for x-intercept. It can be an x-intercept, it can be a 0, it can be a root. And those are all words you're going to hear, so you need to know they're interchangeable. So that's x and y-intercepts. Have a good rest of your weekend, and I will see you on Monday.